Uh, this tutorial is dealing with all the properties of EM waves, but our concentration is going to be on visible light since that's the one we can manipulate and we can actually um, play around with, quote unquote. We're going to look at the visible light as the representation of all the electromagnetic waves. So the first uh, principle we're going to look at today is the, the law of reflection or why things reflect. Now reflection is due to the change in position as the waves strike or the electromagnetic wave strikes the surface of whatever it is touching. And um, when it does this, it will produce hopefully some sort of image depending on the surface type. Now in Latin, the word reflectere represents to uh, bounce back, which basically is what happens. So we're going to be looking at these different images that could be produced depending on the mirror itself, because that's what we're going to look at with reflection. So let's look at what we call the symmetry of reflection of light. And there is a reason why light actually reflects. So um, with the symmetry of light, we have two different angles. When light is hitting, straight up and down, we can assume it's just going straight up and down into our flat surface. We have the angle or the image of light that's actually being hitting, striking, excuse me, the surface, the reflecting surface, and it will equal the angle at which it bounces or goes back from. These two angles will be equal to each other. We have the incident or emerging light, and then we have the reflected light. And so we can measure with a protractor these two angles and they will be equal to each other, which, will, which is what we call the law of reflection. And this law of reflection helps us understand exactly why we see images the way we do, depending on the types of mirrors we're looking at. So first of all, we're going to look at the different factors or a couple of factors that may affect the actual reflection of light. And so we have, first of all, a, uh, something known as the, um, a rough texture surface, which will give us what we call a diffuse reflection. The reason why it's diffuse is because here is our rough um, surface and the angle at which the light comes in is going to be different at which the angle comes out. So in each little different irregularity, we see the reflected light being heading at different angles and therefore we're not going to get a clear image. Um, this word diffuse, if we break it up into prefixes, D-I-F-F, meaning um, different, same thing different, so it's, when it's sending it out at different angles. And hence, with this type of surface, we would not see a clear image. So, we need to have a surface that is not rough or textured, such as like a piece of paper like this one. We don't see ourselves through this piece of paper because if you look at it in, through a microscope, you're going to see how the surface is very rough, and that's an exaggerated view of what the surface may be. Now, if your surface is smooth and shiny, such as in a mirror or a, um, a body of water that is extremely still, we have a very smooth, shiny surface. And with this, as the light hits the surface, the angles are all equal to each other, and hence it will form the image the way we're supposed to see it nice and clear. And this is known as a specular reflection. The specular reflection is produced by a smooth, shiny surface where all the angles of which are coming in and hitting the surface are being reflected out equally each other, similar to how we saw it with the um, law of reflection where the angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection. Now, we have different types of mirrors that may affect how these angles are actually committed. So the first mirror we're gonna look at is a flat mirror, which is basically the one that we always look at ourselves or we hope we look at ourselves um, in the morning before we leave uh, to go outside. With these mirrors, we're going to see the object here is going to appear to be behind the actual um, mirror. It, the object looks like it's behind the wall if you're looking at yourself in a, in a mirror at your home. 
the distance between the object and the mirror is going to be the same as what it appears to be behind the mirror. And so these are equal distances as much as the height of the object here facing the mirror is going to be the same as what it appears on the other side of the mirror. Now these images are known to be reversed, which we know, we know we see ourselves and we see ourselves reversed. We also see it as a virtual image. The virtual image is an image that appears to be behind the wall instead of on the same side. And then we also see that the object, like I said, is going to be just as far and as high as the other ones is. And, th and hence, that's why I had already mentioned that this is one of the ways that in investigations, they can determine where the person was standing if in case they do have a uh, reflection of some sort um, in, in the picture that they're investigating or in the scene that they're investigating with film and etc. And we'll be looking at shadows a little bit more intense and you'll understand how we can also use shadowing along with mirrors in order to determine that. So we have, like I said, keywords here, virtual image, meaning it appears behind the mirror. We have a reversed uh, image. We have an image that appears to be far behind that's equal as it is in front and we do have it the same height. Now, here's a good question for you all to go and uh, try. If you have a mirror that only shows half of you, is there a certain way you can place it to show all of you, all of your body instead of just half of your body? So that's something you can toy around with with a mirror and see if, if changing it, you can actually change what you see. Now, because we know this about flat mirrors and mirrors in general, we know that windows sometimes reflect like mirrors. And so in store displays, if they're trying to get the, the people to go in, we don't want it to be like a mirror. So what they do is they will tilt a little bit the windows of their um, stores so that they don't get this reflection property. And so it, what happens is that it becomes more like a duck Houston so you can see through it instead of uh, getting a complete reflection. And so they'll play around with it so that you end up being able to eliminate that mirror type um, appearance and be able to see inside the store, which is how they get people to go in. Now we have another type, a, a couple of types of mirrors. One of them is, called, is a curved or the curved mirrors, one of them is called a concave mirror. A concave mirror is a mirror that curves away from the object. So if this is you standing here, this is the mirror and it curves away from you and this is where the quote unquote image would appear on behind the mirror. Now with these type of mirrors, depending on where the object is in respect to the center point, and the, what we call a focal point where all the rays would curve up out, it de will determine what kind of image you're going to see. So if the object is outside of the focal point, in other words, further away than the focal point, you're going to see an image that appears to be what we call real. In other words, it'll appear like it's on the same side as the object instead of behind the object like we did with the flat mirrors. It's going to appear on the same side. Along with that, it's going to appear smaller in size. It's not going to be equal size the way it was in the other one. And it's going to be inverted, or in other words, upside down. Um, with, the, with these type of mirrors, it's going to be harder for us to actually do calculations and try to determine exactly how far away things are unless we know exactly how curved. Because this curvature here really dictates how much smaller they're going to look, how... Um, closer to the mirror they're going to appear. So this curvature really has a big um, effect on exactly what kind of image you see. So if the image, or if, sorry, the object in this type of mirror is right at the focal point, you're not going to see an image produced at all. And these images, um, these type of uh, mirrors or the way we can use these is just to reflect light even more intensely. In other words, to make it uh, more intense light, brighter light, uh, such as with reflectors or the um, silver, that's what explains that silver lining they have, like in the car lights. So, so small light bulb will end up giving you a lot of light because it does show, serve as an actual reflector and it in, in essence multiplies whatever wattage you have in it.
Now if the object is inside the focal point, in other words, here's the focal point, if the object is in between the mirror and the focal point, we're going to have an object that's going to be larger in respect to the actual object that's going to appear larger. It's going to appear right side up instead of upside down. It will be up right side up and it's going to be virtual. So again, it'll, it'll appear like it's behind the mirror instead of right next to you the way it does if it is um, outside of the focal point like I did in the first example I gave you. And so this, this type of mirror can be used in a bunch of different ways depending on what the outcome of it is. Um, some of these um, mirrors, concave, are used in um, microscopes in order to be able to make a very small object large, as you were saying. Or um, telescopes, when we have looking far objects, we want to make them visible so we can also use them. Now the last type of mirror that we're going to look at today is called a convex mirror. Convex mirrors are curved towards the object. So if you're standing here looking this way, the curvature, the bulging part is towards you. And so with these, really there's only one image that's going to be uh, visible through this and it's called, it's a virtual image. So you're going to appear like you're on the other side of the mirror, but you're going to appear smaller than what you really are. And the other thing is that because you appear smaller, it gives you the idea that it's further away because mentally we think something small it must be far, when in actuality it's closer to you. And that's why on the cars it does say that it has to be, um, you have to be careful because they will be um, closer than what they appear. And these type of mirrors give you a large field of view, in other words, a bigger range of view. And hence why they have now put one of those mirrors at the entrance of the uh, rotunda so that people stop crashing into each other whenever they're walking in. So now we have a uh, basic of reflection that we're going to be toying with this week. Um, please make sure that you review and go through these words. We will be using them uh, quite a bit.